Hi guys, welcome back. Welcome. Me again. <laughs> right, uh, I'm going to do a little turn. I've got, I had a, had a question the other day. Now, first first thing I want to talk about. What fall off? It's right away. <laughs> yeah, the um, wood I turned the other day, because this was off of that, the, the wood I brought back, the tree, and it, I was quite surprised because I thought this was going to be really wet. And it was as dry as a... Yeah. <laughs> There's many things that can be very dry, so it's as dry as one of those things. Right. Um, but it's got a lot of spalt in. And the thing was, this actual wood came, because it wasn't dead limb or nothing. I've got another one bit here, see? And this bit's the same. It's got bug holes. It's got hole there. It's, it's very spalted, very dry. This, it's got a little bit of wet here, but it's dry. This was the bit, if you saw the one where I chainsawed the wood, and I chainsawed the first bit off, then I've done the second bit where I cut the bark off. This was the second bit. The, these were both off of that end bit that came off. And this is a bit that's come off of the other side. And what it is, is it's actually got bits, not that one, sorry, this one was off the other side. And it's actually got, see, this has got bits of spalting around here. And this, this here, this bit of wood is bone dry but this over here is wet, so obviously it's whatever the tree had, okay? Like I said, the tree, it, they, they don't just cut down healthy trees, do you? Not a 40 foot weeping mm. ash, you don't just cut it down because you've got nothing else to do. Um, so yeah, there's obviously the, the tree's got a bit of a, of a problem. So that's why I think that was, because that was from a, off of a, the big, one of the big top sort of branches that go up, the, the main sort of stem. But they've actually got the trunk of the tree there, loads of bits of that. You, I can't get out there. They're like, they're that, that tall and they're that, that, that round. So, <laughs> and I don't really want it. But what I have seen, because I've been seeing it, is it's actually got a rot hole right down the middle like that. So the tree was actually rotted right down the center of it. So it's obviously, it's dying. So that's why it was cut down. Which does bring to another little thing when I say about wearing your respirator, you know, because this, I mean, this bit here, guys. This is this is the outside of the tree, okay, and that's on the inside of it, and that's not natural. So that is where the rot. That's the that's a, now. If this is what's killing that tree, what's that going to do if that goes inside your lungs? So think, just think about what you're turning, guys. You know, and protect all wood, all dust. You know, it, it annoys me so much. I see people are turning in glasses and they're saying, "Oh, don't move your Taurus with the lathe turning. It's dangerous." <laughs> Well, the most that's going to do is go, brrr, and that's it. Turning in a pair of glasses and turning something like this, I'm sorry, breathe that in. Once it's in, you can't get it back out. You know, I know people have been turning for years and never worn a dust mask and <coughs> ain't done me no harm. No, but you might be one of those that it does do harm to. I'm putting that on a worm screw, and I'll get to the question that I actually had from Andy. Andy Great. Brady. Now, he did say... Considering I sell carbide, <laughs> my go-to tools always seem to be traditional when I start. And we did have a sort of a, a, a question, sort of, you know, emailed back. I said, well, no, what I always do is I use the best tool for the job. Because um, he was saying about, like, doing some of these odd-shaped bits um, with carbide. And yes, I have done, and I do, but there's certain things... Now for me, if ever I'm gonna do the outside of a bowl, like this or the outside of this, it's spindle gouge or bowl gouge. No better tool for it. And that's for me, I will use the best tool. If you haven't got those, you can't sharpen them, you can't buy them, you can't do whatever, whatever reason, the reason's not important, it's of no, nothing, and you use carbide, then yes, you can do it with carbide. I'm gonna use a bit of carbide on this one today, but you can see how this is very out of bounds. because I've got this big lump over this side, and like I said, that's quite a bad. That's not going to turn so fast. I always say carbide's better with speed. So this isn't going to be the best to turn with carbide. But you can do it if you've got nothing else. That's that's all it comes down to. But always best tool for the job. But nine out of ten times, if I'm hollowing, I will use carbide to, to hollow because it's better for it. I, I personally think. It does, it's a better job, it's an easier thing to use. It removes the wood nice and quick. See, again, the same with this. Now, if I'm using carbide, I will not come in here on the front because that, to me, that is exactly the same as using a roughing gouge, okay? I would not use, 
Right, I'm gonna crank that in a little bit. So everything's now nice and secure between centers. I've got worm screw going in, uh, and I've got my point center going in that way. And I've got my tool rest across the bottom here. So I'm just not touching. And I, my first cuts are gonna be this way. Cause like I said, if I go this way, I'll get to here and the chances are that's gonna to want to chunk straight off, okay? And that's why we don't use a roughing gouge for it. So but I'm gonna, yeah, and all I'm gonna use on this, is, it's quite a big chunk. So I reckon I'm gonna use the, my 15 mil. Now you can use the 14 mil, there's nothing wrong with using the 14 mil. I'm gonna use the 15 mil square, not to take bigger cuts, but it's just, it's got a stronger bar, okay? And I'm just gonna come in here and take some gentle cuts off of this until I can get this round, really. Yes, I could have put it on the bandsaw and cut it to round, but then where's the fun? <laughs> right, okay, I'm putting the mask on. Okay. Always put your dust mask on. Right, lace piece turned down. See what I can get it to. Oh, that's some bubble. <laughs> Just gone over that. I've still got a little bit of wobble, but I think it's going to be all right. I'm going to take some light cuts. This is a very hard wood, so I'm now going to just move the tool rest around a little bit. There we go. To the round there i'm just going to come around the outside of it losing a bit of the diameter okay i want to get it to the, to be round Just on that edge bit, it's banging because it's all bits and pieces there. I'm going to bring the tool rest round. And what I'm going to do, because I don't want to push in, there it is, I don't want to push in straight. I'm going to use a 15 mil round. I'm going to use the round because I can put that up to cut those end bits off. Yeah, we've still got this big flat bit here, see? But I've got... The reason I didn't come over this way is because I want to really get rid of this because this is all that... It's got a nice bit of colour, but it's a lot of rot on that, that edge. Okay? But as I said, we can come in with our carbide, see? But I want to come up a bit more on here, so I'm going to do it... Again, I'm doing it with the square. Let me just get that more on the centre. Oh. 
On centre or above, never below. No, nope, still got that bark. That's it, that's going to go there. So I can take a few cuts on this and get rid of that bit of bark. But this is another reason, because I'm going this way, I'll, I'll get a bit restricted by this. And I want to keep that in place at the moment, because until I get this level, I'm not going to trust just on a worm screw. Now, if I was going to work on the side, I would use a round, I wouldn't use a square, okay? And I would not use it flat, because like I say, when it comes here, that, it wants to chunk that piece off, and I don't want that to happen. You see as you come round, it gets bouncing. Now, I am only first turning this. I'm not going to finish this today, because it is wet. Look, I've got actual wet shavings now. And although I'm only doing a scrape, look, I'm still getting shavings. Right, okay. Let me, uh, I'll just check this is still, yeah, that's still all tight. Everything's all good. Start up. We've still got a little bit of wobble, but it's going. And I'll know when it all comes in balance because all the wobble will stop and then I can get the speed up. And yes, you could use the R2 for this. Now, now we're smooth there. Okay, so we've got to a smooth bit there now. So that gives me an idea of where I'm going. Again, you've got to be careful, you're just using the, the edge. If you do have a... And I am just pushing in flat because I've got so many... Of, that's why I wouldn't normally use a carbide, see? One, it's not fast enough. I'm only at... I'm at 12.35 at the moment. I'll see if I can go a little bit. Oh, there, oh, there, look. <laughs> I've just gone to 15 and the lathe's gone completely flat, okay? No vibration, so now we're doing better. And, and we will, straight away... There's an improvement in the cut, straight away. Now, because we're just using the corner, we can always use our round and go in the same, and use it flat. It's not just the finishing. But for the, the round, I prefer to use the round when I come onto the side of it, which I'm going to have to start doing. And then I start dropping my handle down to come round. And I roll the tool over. Because when I roll it over, there's less chance it's going to grab a chunk and pull it off. You can still see there's a look, there's a lot of bounce in it. It's not round yet. This bit's getting round. But I've still got this bit on this end. I'll go flat for a minute. Get some of that away. bit on the end, see? To go this way. Just stop and have a look what's there. This is that rotten bit on the end. Yeah, it's all this, this sort of rotten. It's very hard though, but we're getting smooth. But I've got this, see? 
I've still got this flat I've got to get rid of. So, but we've got nice wet, wet wood. So, mm. but all that, I'm just turning this bit basically just to, to show with using the carbide, okay? But like I said, I wouldn't, if I'm going with a square, I'll always go that way. I wouldn't go this way with the square, okay? It will do it, but the, when it gets here, you can see what it want, it's going to want to do. It's going to want to take take more wood off of that than I want it to, because we're we're on the square, okay? So for me, it's got to be the round. get the bounce there until I get, get rid of that bit. You can turn the speed up a bit more now because everything's perfectly round and all nice. And now we start to get better cut, see? But of course, the, the, like I've always said, the disadvantage with carbide is we've got the bar. And the bar acts as a limiter. I can only go in, I can only take so much of the cut. Where with a traditional, if you like, a bit bowl gouge, spindle gouge, I can go in a bit more and get a, a, a deeper cut. This would not be my choice, see, to do the outside. Now we're coming down to the outside shape being done. So now I want to look at getting a, a nice a nice finish cut to it. And also getting a foot on the bottom there. my foot that means I can get hold of that and then I'm just going to take this in then again I'm going to come in with the cutter and go this way not that way because I'm turning a bowl so and it, the will still apply as in the roughing gouges or straight in cuts like that not on bowls It's going to be more like a pudding basin. <laughs> I don't mind. Sorry? I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> nice sticky toffee one. <laughs> right, because it's the first turn, obviously I'm not going to get an actual finish on it. I want it to be fairly smooth if I can. Right, so right. That's, as I said, that's not the final shape. It will be turned again when it's dried out a bit. There we go. Look, all the crap that sticks on me. <laughs> oh, I ain't got my wild brush in here. It's in the other workshop. Mm. I would normally just wire brush that off. I'll have to do it later because it's gone quite hard on there. Mm. But right, I'm finished with that at the moment. I'm going to um, just clean this up. I want to put a cleaner finish on the, the outside of it.
Now the skid is because I'm going on a slight dash, so you can't go downhill with a shear cut. You can only go uphill. Otherwise it'll skip back on you. You can't go downhill. Right, okay, let's stop that and have a look at what we've got. Like I say, I'm not finishing it. Right, we've got a nice finish there, look. Now that's straight off of the carbide tools on wet wood. Lisa might come in and you mm -hmm. see that. Okay, so that's the finish we've got off of wet wood with carbide tools. Okay, beautiful finish. I'm not going to sand it because I said it's wet. It's got. It's going to have to be left to. This is just a first turn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that out of the way. Okay, and I'm going to grab my chisel that I have up here. And I'm going to see if I get the grain in the right way. If I can just... Oh, there you go, look at that. Mm. And that shows you because it's so wet, see? There you go. I'll get that novel off and then I've got a tenon to get hold of just to take a bit of the middle out like I say it's a rough turn it's just to get it get it down a bit I can put these tools away 15 mil square 15 mil round I won't be using those ones to do the inside of it but I'll take me uh me elbow stabber out <laughs> my twirly birdie twirly birdie my twirly birdie older that's that gone. Right, okay, let's lock this up and take this off. Oh, no, that's unscrewed me chuck. Oh, that's a screw. Right, so see, <laughs> again, wet wood is gripped it. Mm. I'll just Ooh. drop the chuck key down there. You don't need that? Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, sometime I will. <laughs> right, okay, now there you go. See, this is where I say about it gripping, guys. There we go. That's why I don't, that tightened up, see, with turning, because I'd done it, loosened it, done it again. Oh, thank you, darling. You picked something up without falling over, baby. Yeah, well I done. I didn't knock the camera over, but so. Have you been diluting the drink this morning, have you? <laughs> have you been having a bit of something in with it, have you? <laughs> bit of tonic. <laughs> a bit of tonic, eh? <laughs> with your gin. <laughs> RDG Tools, fantastic. Worm, worm chuck, absolutely brilliant. There's a video on that. There's a video on that. Yeah, I've got a video on that. Don't know why I'm pointing up there because it's not up there. <laughs> right, okay, so I've got my tenon. That's got to fit in these jaws. Oh, you get to use those ones. <laughs> Please don't call me a liar. Because <laughs> I, I mathematically worked out this. <laughs> mathematically. Now, again, I've done it. It's not perfect circle. I do not want the perfect circle at all. I want those eight little edges of the circle, the, the part of the jaw, this bit. When you've got the jaw, I want it so that these eight points actually dig in. That little bit to give me some grip so it can't spin. It's soaking wet wood, and as you see what happened with that little knob, it can come off. I do not want to over tighten. That is it, tight and a quarter. If I've got to tighten more than that, then I need to look at what, how I'm chucking things. Um, if I put that as a perfect circle, and it's wet wood to stop it spinning i'm gonna to have to tighten down quite hard that means slight catch anything like that that tenon's gonna go this is gonna come off okay so that that that's the reason behind that right that's it that that works for me that's my reason someone else might do it differently that's up to them he's the bloke you'll know him he's the bloke with the the broken nose <laughs> He does it differently. The bruises. <laughs> and the bruises, yeah. <laughs> right, okay, guys. Now I'm going to um, just get a bit of this hollowed out. I just want to reduce the centre, and then this is going to be bunged in the bag with the shavings, and it's just going to be left to dry, and I'll turn it out later day. Yeah. It's just the first turning. All that, all the rest of the wood is all, all done. It's all sealed up, and it's being left, so that's going to be a while before I turn most of that. A couple of bits I will wet turn, but most of it will be left. Right, okay, I'm going to start on this, I'm going to use a, but I just want to remove it as bulk at first, I'm going to use the 12mm from the standard Type 3 chisel set, okay, so I'm going to turn the speed down because I've just remounted it, everything's running through, so I'm going to turn the speed up, 
Like I say, 1000 RPM, no good if you're using carbide, I'm afraid. We've got to go up with the speed. Right, so we're back up to 1800 I am here. I'm just going to go flat at the moment, see what's happening with the wood. Although I am coming backwards with it, and for most of my cuts are going on the push in, okay? Everything should go to the centre. And then what I'm going to do just to make to take some speed, we're going to use a square. See, and you will get shavings, but if you notice, the shavings will be curled and scrunched in little bits. That's because we are just scraping, okay? When you cut in, they're being more ribbon. But there's nothing wrong with it. Don't worry about it. And this is just the first turn. I'm not over worried about the... Well, I can't say I'm not worried about the finish. I will always give as clean a finish as I can ever get. First cut to last cut. Put you in good practice. Now, if you're coming into the centre of the square, come in at the side. You don't want to come in flat, because it will, it will grab on you. Now for a first turn thickness that's probably going to be around about it, okay, because I, I know it's going to move and I'm going to have to true it up again. Right, so now we can go back over to the round and we can go a bit deeper. I'm doing there is basically making a hole so that I can go in with the uh, the square.
bit high, I'm, I'm quite a bit above centre there. There we go. Okay, now we've got a bit of a chart. I'm going to go a little bit thinner on the bottom because obviously I want the, the, the thickness the same all the way around. And at the moment, I've probably got a quarter of an inch or more thicker on the bottom. But we've got a lovely finish in there. So that's, that's good. Okay. And I've got a true up the front of it. So still just using the round. I've just got to go a bit deeper on the bottom. Now, we'll get a little bit of grab because I am sort of over half of the bar in, overhanging the tool rest. But it's okay because if we control that cut, we will be fine, no grabbing. I'm only thinking, I'm only thinking, but I'm thinking that's probably deep enough. No, we're not. We go a little bit more. I've got, I've still got about a quarter of an inch. I thought I'd less than that. I've still got about a quarter of an inch over. So we'll take a little bit more off that bottom. Got a lovely finish on it, beautiful finish. enough now so we're okay now so now I just want to I want to just finish it a little bit so it's not as oh, it's a bit got my handle down so I can get a nice Yeah, fairly smooth. Right, now I just want to come, I'm going to just come on that bottom. Because we've rolled over. Handles going right down, right down, right down, right down, right down. Keep it going, keep it going, keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. Right, got a little bump just there. It's not going to match, it's going to be turned again, but we're not having that. Right, there we go. That has just left us with a lovely clean finish, and that's our first turn bowl. Right, there we go, guys. So, first turn bowl with, uh, with carbide. So, let's pop that off for there. See? And all we've done now. If you look, you can see exactly where I was holding that. Okay. See the eight little marks? The eight little holes? Right. That's what gave me the grip on that with no over-tightening. And we used carbide and we was pushing in. 
no fear of that cut. I've got no fear of it coming off. I trust that 100%. Right, we've got even thickness now all the way around that. That can now be left to, to dry. I wouldn't be able to sand that and put for you. You can see where it's going pink. Okay, that's where I've taken the bark off. Now it's going to get a bit of suntan. No, <laughs> that's um, that's where it's, it's, it's wet and it's going a bit pink. So there we go. But look, that's the important bit. Look, we've got a lovely finish on the inside as well. Because I've just done that cut to get a finish cut. That's a finished cut on the inside of the bowl with the carbide. Although we're going to first turn this, it's going to need all turning again. Still leave it as best as you can. It's just nice. So there we go. First turn with carbide. So, Andy, yes, you can do it. But why? I mean, mostly I would normally hollow out with carbide anyway. I, I prefer it. I like hollowing with carbide. I find it fun. I enjoy it. Um, sometimes I'll do it with a bowl because when I come down here to turn, I do what I enjoy, I'm here to enjoy. I don't want to come down and go, well, oh, I didn't enjoy that. <laughs> I come down to enjoy it. Sometimes I do like to use a bowl gouge and a spindle gouge. I like to use all the tools, everything. But normally, like as I showed there, I would not use carbide on the outside. That would not be my, I wouldn't recommend that to everyone. Whether I sell them or not, I would not say that that's the best method to rough the outside of a bowl, no. Spindle gouge would be my first choice if I can use it, if the spindle gouge isn't strong enough and not as in strong enough as in thickness of steel strong as in not giving me the vibration if i need to over sometimes because of the shape you've got to overhang that little bit more um and i might get a bit more vibration that's all it is the spindle gouge is strong enough no doubts about that whatsoever i mean i've just cut all that with look two mil of carbide because don't forget that might have a, a well i used the 15 mil so i might have a 12 mil bar but still only got two mil thickness of cutter okay if anything's going to snap that's going to go long before a spindle gouge will go it didn't break so there you go it shows you what what what's what done it but speed is important so but yeah for me if someone said to me right i've got to rough down a load of bowls what's the best way spindle gouge or bowl gouge on the outside okay that would be my choice um if you haven't got them then you can use a carbide, no problem. Just done it and you've seen beautiful finish as well. Look, that's a first turn with carbide, okay? And we finished it and that's it. So, but you, if you're gonna use your carbide a little bit more speed is best if you can get the speed up. If you're gonna do it at 500 RPM or 600 RPM, waste the time with carbide. It really is not the best, it's not for it. Wrong tool for the job, I'm afraid. If it's all you've got, then fine, use it, you know? No one's going to kill you for it. So, but if it's if it's not, if you've got the opportunity for a different tour, you can get the, get the speed up. Like I say, come out of the way. Make sure everything's secure. Secure it between says, Don't matter if you get a little bit of wobble. That ain't, that ain't going to cause you no problems. It's you'll know. Just get in and do a few quick cuts and get the, the bulk off the the rough bits. It come in balance. You need that little bit of speed. But if you're going to use a bit of speed, you've got to make sure you've mounted your bowl properly as you do. So you see what I did, I've got a worm screw in there and I've got my centre right up here. I know that cannot come off of there. It won't come off. Um, I don't like face plates, I never have. If I was doing a bigger piece, then what I might do is I might drill a 54 mil hole and then I will stick those jaws inside, open them up, that I know there's no way that bowl's going to move enough to come off of that, and I'll have my tail stock up. I can tell that's how I will do when I do the cowboy hat because it's going to be a big chunk of wood, it will be over the top of that, that will open up, and I will have the tail stock up. I know no matter what happens, the lathe was to dance and walk around the shop, <laughs> it, that piece of wood ain't coming off. That's the important bit, but that's down to you to work out how you want to do that, okay. I would never recommend a way for other people to do it. That's that's how I will do it, and I feel safe and confident. And when I remount that, I do ne I never want that to be perfect circle, I, because it's not for a finish. I'm not going to keep it on there. I want those jaws to have that little bite there. That gives me the grip, stops it turning, because I don't want that when that's in there. I don't want that to be moving round because it will slowly creep round on a perfect circle unless you wrench down it's wet wood i don't want to wrench down on it wrench down on it get a catch that's gone that's it end of it will just peel off if i was to put that there now and just tap that with the chisel 
that will just peel off. If I put it in there and gave it a bang, it will peel off, okay, because it's wet wood. But with those teeth, I only have to hold, all I've got to do is stop it spinning. It's not going to come off, it ain't going to come that way. It's always going to stay there, and all my cuts, are, I'm, not, I'm not pushing out here with it. All my cuts are going to the centre. So it's got no reason to want to come off. Don't want to go nowhere, do you? Of course I don't. There so, see? <laughs> right, there you go, guys. That's that's it, done. Roughing down, first turn with carbides. Can it be done? Yes, it can. Beautiful, beautiful finish. Look at that finish. You'd think I'd sanded that to about 4,000 grit. Right, toodle pip, guys. I'll see you on the next one. Bye, guys.